Welcome. Uh, as we start to review on Thursday, uh, August 5th, the reviews of the proposals for the federal monies that have come in. And our first presenters today are from the Hoyle Gas and Electric, and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves, and then uh, you are free to talk about your proposal. You have 15 minutes, and uh, please start. Okay, we shall see. Well, my name is Kate Sullivan Craven, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at the Hoyle Gas and Electric. Um, this is Tim Haas. He is our, C our um, Chief Technology Officer at the Hoyle Gas and Electric. And this is Jim Crowley, uh, a senior network engineer at the Hoyo Gas and Electric. So I just want to quickly thank you and welcome. Of course, of course, thank you, Mayor thank Murphy, you. Um, and of course, Kate, Alicia, and the Office of Community Development for all their hard work on this and project. If I could just stop for one yes. second, I just want to also acknowledge that we have Kate Preisler from the Office of Community Development sitting here with me. So yes, thank yes. you for letting me remember <laughs> of that. Of course, we really appreciate the way that you've handled this process and made it transparent for the residents and, and customers of Hoyoke Gas and Electric. Um, I'll give a quick overview of where Hoyoke Gas and Electric is right now related to fiber to the home um, and then get into our ARPA application. So as a local municipal utility, hg &E has a fiduciary responsibility to the customers, um, our ratepayers, to make sure that every investment we make is in the best interest of the whole community. Uh, we're in a unique um, position to make decisions based on the needs of our customer base. Uh, today we offer uh, fiber service to local schools, to businesses in the community, and also community organizations. And for years we've evaluated the potential of offering a fiber residential service throughout the community. Uh, in 2015, we implemented our first pilot program at Chestnut Park Apartments. Um, and that was during the complete redevelopment. That was the old Hoyoke Catholic building, buildings. Um, that was a complete redevelopment of that property. So it was easy for us to get into that facility and make improvements that needed to be made in order to provide fiber service to those customers. So we know that we are fully capable of providing fiber service to residential customers, uh, but we've just been carefully analyzing the feasibility of rolling this out due to the cost that is associated um, with this type of deployment. So we know that there must be sufficient interest in this service in order for us to kind of break even or make it a, a profitable venture for the Hoyo Gas and Electric. Preliminary estimates for a citywide build is $30 million. Um, that does not account for multi-dwelling units, which we call MDUs. Um, those are typically handled on a case-by-case -case basis, similar to Chestnut Park Apartments. We do have two other pilot programs, one at the Cubit Building and also one at Russell Terrace, which is a new development. Um, the Cubit Building, those were installed during the complete redevelopment of that facility, and also we have HCC on the bottom floor of that development, and then Russell Terrace is a completely new, new building on Russell Terrace. Um, so we know that the rates that we charge our customers would have to be set at a sufficient level in order for us to be able to recoup the cost of development. We're obviously owned by the ratepayers of the community, so we don't want um, a service that a few customers want to kind of be absorbed by the entire customer right. base. So the ARPA funding would have a significant impact on HG&E's fiber strategy and the way that we look towards the future and how we would further develop the possibility of rolling out fiber to the home. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, um, internet access became critical as kids were going to school in their living rooms and going to the doctor's office in their living rooms and parents, um, I don't really wanna talk about it, but we had to work from home um, and it was very difficult and challenging for many families. Um, and many residents in the city of Holyoke were unable to connect due to slow internet speeds or unreliable internet service. Um, Mike Moyardi is here. He's one of our partner organizations in this application, and he did provide me some statistics from the Department of, um, the, of DESE, I'm sorry, uh, about the Holyoke's chronic absenteeism had increased 18.4% from pre-COVID levels, and over 2,000 school children in the Hoyt Public Schools missed over 10% um, of school days during remote learning. 
So as you also probably know, over the last three months, we've done a pretty aggressive um, marketing campaign or a test marketing campaign uh, through the community and trying to gauge interest in what the potential take rate would be for this potential service that we would offer. Um, this has given us an opportunity to educate customers on exactly what fiber to the home is, because many customers don't really understand what it means to, to cut the cord or to kind of stream all their entertainment over the internet. Uh, so we're currently analyzing the results of that study and that work and really trying to balance the cost versus the interest and also other potential risks in technology uh, and other factors that come into play there. Mm -hmm. So through our ARPA application, which is why we're here today, we have, um, we hope to secure funding for items that would help us further define our strategy in rolling out fiber to the home um, and try to offset this extremely large capital investment for the community. So the first thing, the first, we, there's four parts to our application and the first part is broadband network design. And Mayor Murphy, you said to make sure that we identify if we could only get a portion yep. of the funds that we've, we've asked for. Um, I think the design would be the most critical piece of this ARPA application. In order for us to design a holistic and sustainable network for the community that we can continue to scale and build on over the years, we need that full network design. We don't wanna just build out pilot neighborhoods um, kind of piecemeal. We wanna make sure that we understand the strategy for the whole community. And then when we get into the, go ahead. In, in a whole community, are we talking, are we including the apartment dwellings or are we still not? Yes, so okay. we, the design would include the entire city. It, it okay. Would, yes, yes. Okay. It would um, include the fiber drop to the building. Yeah. Okay. Once we get to the building, it's an individual case basis because we have to deal with individual building owners, uh, easements, inside wiring, which becomes a cost prohibitive challenge. So we okay. have to manage that with building owners okay. to uh, create a business case that's sustainable oh. per apartment building. Mm -hmm. Okay, would each landlord have control as to whether or not you could do that? If a tenant wanted it, without the landlord allowing you to do that, I'm assuming the tenant can't get it. That's Am I correct. correct? Okay, correct. Yes. thank you. Yes, and we'll get into that a little bit more when we talk about our partnerships. Um, so we really, through this design, we'd also be able to understand the true cost. So right now we have an estimate of $30 million. Um, Tim and Jim have worked as a consultant and project manager in various fiber to the home um, pro projects in this region. They are seen um, as the, the top, the leaders in mm -hmm. understanding exactly how to develop the, these products. So many communities seek the Holyoke Gas and Electric um, advice on how to move forward, whether they're creating an MLP or, or whatever, whatever it may be. Um, so in order, to, so we've used some of that experience that Tim and Jim have in the field to develop our estimates, but the design will give us the true costs associated with what the build would actually be. Okay. So this would help us kind of get the real numbers um, based on just, just estimates. Would that also give you a better idea what it might cost for people? Yes, Is that part exactly. of this I design exactly. plan? Okay. Yes, and right now the pro forma of $30 million is based on our estimates from different projects that we've worked on and talking to leaders in the industry, um, but the design would be able to really help us establish exactly what those true costs would be. Okay, thank you. Um, in addition, the design would help us be able to pivot more easily. So if we see from this interest campaign that we just ran that there's a pocket of interest in one particular neighborhood, we would be able to move on that design um, and run a pilot program. Yeah. So at this point, without that design, we can't, the, the design is really the next critical step in our process in moving forward with fiber to the home. Um, the second thing after design in our application is Pull Make Ready, which is a $2.2 million um, investment, and that would have a citywide impact. And I think Jim can maybe speak to a little bit. He's an, he's an engineer, so okay. he can talk more technically. I'll keep it short. Um, the, the make, so the Pull Make Ready, uh, can, there's approximately 4,000 utility poles within Holyoke. And looking at prior projects that we worked on, uh, we have an estimate of the, the average number of poles or average percent that will have to be replaced 
uh, make ready is actually the process of um, making space in the pole for another cable. So you're working with uh, telephone company, yep. cable companies, plus the electric utility that all occupy it. Um, through this process, you find out some poles are too short to support a fiber that would be uh, near the phone and cables that are on there right now. So um, going through this, you're gonna identify a certain number of poles um, and just replacing those, the cost of doing that uh, between multiple utilities uh, really adds up pretty quickly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that doing that make ready um, on every pole would make the project shovel ready throughout the community. So if we were able to uh, secure funding for that, that would make it even more uh, feasible to, to move forward with um, a pilot or any, any other opportunities. So the proposed pilots is the third and fourth um, item on our application for this ARPA funding. Mm -hmm. We have partnered with organizations like Mike Moyarty's One yep. Holyoke, Holyoke Housing Authority, Wayfinders, um, and VOC in order to just to establish exactly what critical buildings might need this this service. So, are there is there a large student population um, in in one per particular building downtown that is owned by either One Holyoke or Holyoke Housing Authority Wayfinders or VOC that we could work with them in partnership? There is a supplemental application ARPA application for two hundred and eighty thousand dollars through our partner organizations. And those are for, that is for inside wiring, as Tim mentioned, once you get to kind of the, the door of the facility, it's really on the landlord to wire up, up the building. So that would pay for some of those improvements. And in addition to that, um, we would pay for approximately 100 customers um, a $50 subsidy on their internet bill for the three year period that this, this grant um, allows. So that there's kind of, um, there's, a, there's two parts to this particular part of the proposal. Um, we would do partial fiber to the home and partial um, CBRS wireless, which is a 5G technology, which I think Tim can speak to for a minute. Sure, CBRS is uh, a new technology Citizens Broadband Radio Service. It's a spectrum uh, in the mid-band of, of the 5G spectrum that was uh, allocated for lower speed, reliable connectivity. So up to about 200 megabits, and they're working on up to 400 megabits. So it's not nearly the threshold of what fiber optic broadband can provide, but it may be a cost-effective solution that has just enough. 200 megabits is mm -hmm. a considerable amount of bandwidth, and most <laughs> households can run on, on less than that sufficiently, even with all the video and all this. So it's a new technology that's yet to be, it's starting to be rolled out, and there is a pilot currently going on with Holyoke Public Schools, and with this money, we'd be looking to kind of extend that idea and see okay. if it is a viable solution, particularly for single family homes and uh, small multi-dwelling units where we can put a radio antenna up instead of digging up the yard to put a fiber cable in. Okay, the pilot program for the 100 homes, if I'm hearing correctly, really can't take effect until we have the broadband design, mm -hmm. right? So the design comes first, then if we got that, then we would be testing it in the 100 homes. So, yeah. and it, if we got to that point uh, with the 100 homes, I'm assuming the four, uh, housing uh, developers, I'll call them for lack of a better word, uh, if we were to do you know, 25 apartments in each one. Mm -hmm. um, so those those 25 apartments at one Hoyoke and the Hoyoke Housing Authority, Valley Opportunity Council and Wayfinder, those households would be able to sign up to be part of the pilot and as doing so would end up with a $50 credit for three years. Yes. $50 a month credit yes. for three years. Yes. Okay. Yes, and we would target those qualified census tracks yep. for those particular pilots just to make sure, um, you know, we're studying this this opportunity in kind of, you know, the, those qualified census tracks and making sure low-income customers who don't have reliable access to Internet are okay. getting that from this program. Okay. And, and once those initial expenses are completed, the fiber connection into the building, the inside wiring, and the initial customers, 
based on revenues, we can now possibly propose to more residences outside right. of the pilot okay. within those same buildings that have right. already been lit up. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So once that's done, we, we would be in, if so many landlords agree to let you in. <laughs> Uh, in a position and they to, have. to <laughs> well, those landlords have. Yeah, but, right, those. Uh, there's other yeah. landlords that are yeah. not part of those, and obviously, I, one of the goals, if we provide something, is to provide it throughout the community. Yes. Uh, and obviously, there's legal aspects because of someone owning an apartment building, you can't go and do something until right. then. And uh, I just want to thank you for your time because we are wrapping up. Uh, first of all, I appreciate your interest. One of the other aspects here I want to emphasize is this new infrastructure money. Uh, looks like it is really emphasizing uh, broadband and wireless uh, more than ARPA. And so that's also a possibility. So uh, whether this pans out or not, let's continue to look. Uh, I'm hoping to get more direction Obviously, the Senate's in debate now about it, so hopefully that direction will give us a lot more information. Yeah. But my understanding is there's a significant portion uh, yeah. for fiber. Seventy-five billion. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Start dropping a bucket. <laughs> See? No, compared numbers, to the so, numbers guy. <laughs> I do appreciate your time, and like I say, we got, we have a very hectic schedule here, so we appreciate we you coming in. Thank you very much for the proposal. Thank you very much for trying to serve the city of Hoyoke and for what you've done in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you both for taking the time.